Hello. Welcome back to Ms. Bell's classroom. Today in class, we're going to be talking about stars. So we'll be talking about um, how stars live and how they die. So we'll start by talking about um, just how stars are born. I hope that you enjoy this lesson. So molecular clouds are cold, dark, giant condensations of dust and molecular gas, which serve as stellar nurseries. All stars are born in molecular clouds, including our sun. Molecular clouds are the stuff we're made of. So because of their dusty content, visible light cannot penetrate into a molecular cloud. Thus, infrared and submillimeter observations are needed to see the star forming process. So you start with the molecular cloud. You say, this is our molecular cloud. And in that molecular cloud, we've got, it's a cold, dark, giant condensation of dust and molecular gas or stuff um, and these are our stellar nurseries and um, eventually those will become more of a tiny cloud here got a little spots here so here's our cloud core and then these fragments will collapse so parts of it will break off And under gravity, it's going to break off, making the proto stars, and then these will accumulate um, in falling matter and form circumstellar disks and powerful outflows and jets. So then, a newborn star illuminates its disk from the edge. about the life and death of a low mass star now. Um, so you're going to start with a normal star like the sun. So the fusion of protons into helium in the star's center generates heat and into helium in the star's center generates the heat and pressure. So that can support the weight of the star. Um, the sun was mostly made of hydrogen so one proton and electron it was born and it started with enough hydrogen to last like this for about 15 billion years so when it begins to run out of hydrogen in its center not enough heat and pressure are generated to balance the star's weight so the core of the star gradually begins to collapse so as the core collapses it gets hotter Though no extra heat has been generated, just because it compresses, it gets so hot that light from the core causes the outer parts of the star to expand and gets less dense, whereupon the star looks cooler from the outside. The star is becoming a red giant. Any questions with that so far? Does it make sense? So you're going to have a star, and it's going to have the heat and pressure supporting it. So this is our sun. We got heat and pressure. Kind of pushing the opposite ends here. Okay, so we've got heat and pressure kind of pushing on opposite ends, and that's supporting the weight of the sun, kind of allowing it to stay alive. So eventually, um, you know, that it's going to run out of the hydrogen, and that's going to stop the heat and pressure. It's going to run out of the heat and pressure. And then that 
is what is generating the balance of the star's weight so eventually the core is going to start to collapse once the core collapses it gets hotter and it, there's no extra heat that's being generated so it's going to compress compress here put it together because there's no extra heat and once it's compressed it's going to get so hot that the light from the core causes outer parts of the store star to expand and get less dense so it's going to be a red giant so it's starting to expand expand and then it becomes a red giant so it looks cooler from the outside it's less dense as it expands so eventually the core gets so hot that it is possible for helium to fuse into carbon and oxygen. The extra heat and pressure are once again generated and the core stops collapsing. So it's stable until the helium runs out, which takes a few million years. And the outer parts of the star aren't very stable though. So we have this red giant, we have some in this area with the stripes here. area, this is matter flowing away from the star. So it takes about a few million years for it all to kind of start flowing away. Um, and then eventually, all of the carbon and oxygen is here, and it's only carbon and oxygen in the core. So no additional heat and gas pressure is generated, and the core begins to actually start collapsing again and this time the density is so large the electrons are so close together that the electron uh, degeneracy pressure begins to increase significantly as the collapse proceeds so even more you're gonna have even more coming out here and it's going to be more matter flowing away from the star electron um, pressure eventually brings the collapse of the core to a halt before it gets hot enough to fuse carbon and oxygen into uh, magnesium and silica so the unstable outer parts of the star will eventually fall apart together and they are ejected and ionized by light from the core producing a planetary nebula so it's going to start as a sun, and then there's going to be, oops. it's going to start as a sun, and then, you know, the heat and pressure are going to eventually stop, it's only going to be the core, and then it starts to expand, and then the matter keeps flowing, and then it will turn into the planetary nebula. So, the planetary nebula's material expands away from the scene in a few thousand years. So quicker than the other steps, leaving behind the hot former core of the star. So it's going to actually be about the size of the Earth. We've got the core here. Once so all of the material will expand away, so it's going to go away and it's going to leave just the core behind. So it's going to be about the size of the Earth, and its weight supported against further collapse by electron uh, pressure. It will do nothing but sit there and cool off for eternity. So when brand new like this, um, the degenerate star is quite hot and looks very white, like a Sirius B or even blue in color, so leading to the name White Dwarf. The oldest white dwarfs in our galaxy age about 12 billion years and they've had enough time to cool down 
to temperatures in the few thousands of degrees and thus now they look red so they're still called white dwarfs though so I've got a question how heavy do you think a white dwarf can be? yes okay so a star heavier um, than 1.4 m can no longer be supported against gravitational collapse by the degeneracy pressure of electrons. So today, thousands of white dwarf stars are known. Sure enough, all stellar masses under 1.4 m are represented, but no white dwarf heavier than this has ever been found. If you think about um, the sun, they're all going to, all the stars are going to end up as white dwarfs. Um, so high mass stars are a little different. Um, nuclear reactions proceed until the core becomes iron and the core collapses until density becomes so high that neutrons are packed very, very tightly and their degeneracy pressure supports against gravity. So, a neutron star will keep um, degenerating until it actually collapses. So, once that happens, um, it's a very dramatic explosion and it's called a Microsoft supernova. It's very dramatic. So, that's when a high mass star, um, you know, the ending, the explosion ending. Very beautiful. I've ever seen them. The next thing we're going to talk about is a neutron star and its properties. So if this was and then this is about the size of a neutron star compared to Mount Everest. And the weight of a neutron star is about the same as two battleships. Um, so it's not very heavy and it's thinking about the entire you know, universe, it's not very big. about today is um, how neutron stars manifest themselves. So raise your hand if you've ever heard of pulsars. Okay, so it's on this hat. So a pulsar So a pulsar is a magnetized spinning neutron star that emits a beam of radiation so mostly radio but also x-ray and optical as the star spins its beam sweeps around and anytime the beam sweeps by the earth the telescopes detect a pulse of radiation so if we've got our um, neutron star here which we know is about the size of Mount Everest so here's our neutron star and a pulsar neutron star and it's just a spinning pulsar it's just a spinning neutron neutron star that's emitting a 
um, a beam of radiation. So you've got these beams emitting all that radiation and light. And you know, when it does pass Earth, you can see it. It's very neat. mini lesson on stars and if you have any questions feel free to let me know. I will see you